police are fighting to get fentanyl off of the streets. While others are educating students and community members the dangers this deadly drug can hold, especially on the families of those who have passed. It's never been easier to gamble than it is now. Online sites like this one are tempting and troubling, according to experts. Across the state of Mississippi, voters came rolling into the polls on Tuesday. They had many tough choices to make, but the one that was on everyone's minds was the governor's race. One to two inches of rain may seem like a lot to others, but for crops and to farmers, this is not enough to satisfy their needs for harvest season. With the program PK to professional, they are looking forward to seeing what the next generation of students may hold. Juliana Jackson, Newswatch Ole Miss. Welcome back to Newswatch Ole Miss. I'm Juliana Jackson. Spring break is next week and we are all looking for those spring-like temperatures. Well, I'm from Mississippi, so growing up, I've seen all these different mascots, but who would you like to see become our next mascot? I mean, I'm from Kentucky, so I've only been here a short while, but if I had to pick, I think it would be interesting to see Juice Kiffin as the new mascot. That would. I think he'd look so cute out there. Juliana, you're a senior. Would you be interested in an event like this? So actually in high school, I was homeschooled, <laughs> but I ended up going to four proms. So oh, I think I got my taste <laughs> okay. on, but I do enjoy a nice college formal with all of my friends. Yes. Well, I wonder what other athletes from Ole Miss is going to get this Lululemon sponsorship or just with any other high fashion brand. The impact drought leaves on crops and farmers can be catastrophic. Clay Adcock, a farmer who grows many seeds, but mainly cotton, says that the absence of rain has already hit the area hard. Yeah, it's just typical farming when you don't have a rain, you don't, your production suffers. So that's probably, we're probably off on our production, not as bad as I one time thought, but we're probably off 10 to 15 percent. With temperatures reaching triple digits during the summer, it's been hard to maintain crops. Told everyone, in 37 years of farming, I've never had it this hot and this dry. We've uh, either one uh, independent of each other. It's just this has been a really unusual. We've had hot, dry years before, of course, but nothing like this. But Adcock isn't ready to blame climate change. There's been situations just like this in the early 1900s where it's just a tremendous dry spell. And then you get tremendous wet spells. We've had wet seasons. So I just, I think it's cyclical. And you do the best you can. So. Whether climate change is to blame or not, it's been a tough year for some cotton farmers and the gins that process their crops. Just north of us, they're picking a good crop. And south, they're picking a good crop. Uh, further south is is pretty rough in Louisiana, but here it's uh, we're we're all probably three four hundred pounds an acre. Boji Kelly is the general manager of Silver Creek Gin in Yazoo County. He says the lack of moisture has caused cotton seeds to shrink in size, and that means so will the profits. Seed seed are smaller. Seed what it doesn't have much seed weight that affects us, affects us on how much we make, which is not not going to be a whole lot. Maybe not even any. Uh, it's uh, it's, it's going to be a tough one for everybody. Despite some recent rain, the drought is not going away anytime soon. One to two inches of rain may seem like a lot to others, but for crops and to farmers, this is not enough to satisfy their needs for harvest season. In Yazoo County, Jillianna Jackson, Newswatch, Ole Miss. It's kind of like the regular, especially around like the fraternity house. Like, it's kind of hard to walk in there throughout the day and not hear one person talk about like gambling on something or losing money or winning money or something. So, I mean, you hear about it so much. A student who will call Joe asked to be anonymous because of his struggles with a gambling addiction. While mobile and online sports betting is not currently legal in Mississippi, he says Ole Miss students use their peers as bookies, often relying on a credit system built on trust. You know, relying on 18 to 22 year olds to pay them when they don't win. So the street definitely goes both ways there with the trust, but I mean, yeah, if he trusts me to pay him, I'll, I'll trust him to pay me. This system, however, can lead to individuals gambling beyond their means, leaving them in debt. I mean, we're college kids, so we're already poor, so if I lose $100, that impacts me financially. Another Ole Miss student says sports betting has become a way of socializing. Oh, absolutely. All, all of my friends sports bet. Everyone I know sports bet. It's easy. If we put a couple of dollars on a game, you know exactly where to go and how to do it. 
It's never been easier to gamble than it is now. Online sites like this one are tempting and troubling, according to experts. You don't recognize it. You think someone's got a drinking problem or a drug problem, but maybe they've turned to the drink and the drugs because they've got financial issues that stem from gambling problems. Ole Miss law professor Ronald Reichlich currently serves on the state's first mobile online sports betting task force. He says college students, especially young men, are the most at risk when it comes to a gambling addiction. I can envision, again, young men being at highest at risk on a Saturday afternoon drinking beer and watching the game throughout the day and by 5 o'clock they're either feeling really good or feeling really bad and trying to dig out of a hole or parlay their winnings. And that's a serious risk. Reichlich wants students to get the education they need about sports betting. Once it becomes legal and you become of age and, and, you, and you, if you want to decide to gamble, you got to gamble smart. You, you know, we have to fold this kind of education into the same kind of education they give at the universities on drugs and alcohol and safe sex. And, and it, it's, it's a danger that's comparable to all of those. A danger that's sitting in your pocket and only a few clicks away. Juliana Jackson, Newswatch, Ole Miss. A night out with friends is normal for the college student. However, one decision could risk your life. Oxford Narcotics Officer Eric Stratton says fentanyl is everywhere. You can't take nothing. I mean, off the street. Everything we've seen, like I said, coke laced with fentanyl, um, some THC laced with fentanyl, Xanax bars laced with fentanyl. I mean, it's just, they're, they're putting fentanyl in there, everything now. It's not like it was 10, 15 years ago. Stratton says young adults are the most high risk for drug abuse, and the smallest amount of fentanyl could become deadly. Student Ashton Heath is the president of the Infrafraternity Council at Ole Miss. He says many drugs have become more accessible to the average student. It's sad, but it's easier to buy illegal drugs um, in, the state, in the city of Oxford than it is to go buy a case of beer. So I think that, that has kind of led to a bit of the pressure um, of drug abuse. And then also to, you know, mental health challenges, things like that. We've seen an increase in, in you know, substance abuse because of those mental health uh, issues. The Oxford Police Department is talking to anyone who will listen on the fentanyl crisis. Stratton says there's really only one way to stay safe. Can't take nothing that's not prescribed by a doctor. Police are fighting to get fentanyl off of the streets. While others are educating students and community members the dangers this deadly drug can hold, especially on the families of those who have passed. 21-year-old Ole Miss student Thomas Mayo died of a fentanyl overdose on April 14, 2022. Thomas's father, Cal Mayo, says his son made one mistake that took his life. Thomas was, was truly a, a unique person. It's probably, it's probably, in all honesty, as much of his, it probably contributed to his death in some ways because Thomas, he had a heart. He, he, his first cousin described him as <clears throat> if, you know, whatever space he occupied, he wanted you in the space with him. After Thomas's death, the Mayo family created the Thomas Mayo Lab in partnership with the William McGee Center and a podcast to help educate others on the dangers of fentanyl and drug abuse. Once we realized the amount of money that was coming in, we wanted to try to capture it. We met with the people at the, at the McGee Center and the people at the University Foundation. They kind of kept all the money together and in consultation with the McGee Center, we decided to um, create the, the Thomas Mayo Lab. Cal wants parents and children to start having those hard conversations and look for the signs of drug use. If, if only one person is positively impacted, then we're even, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we've, we've gained a life back that we might have lost in every other person after that. Mayo and OPD have one message. These pills can be deadly. Juliana Jackson, Newswatch, Ole Miss.